<laughs> okay, like I said, my name is Stephen Lewis. I'm the horticulturalist for Kentucky State University in Louisville, and uh, I've been uh, here for eight years. This is my eighth year in Louisville, and um, so like hydroponics is just one of the things I like to do um, in personal life, but also, you know, uh, dealing with growers, like on a commercial level. Um, I did research uh, in college, and um, all my research was with, with hydroponics as well. So uh, it's just something I've gotten used to doing, and um, um, kind of share a, a system, a method of growing uh, plants hydroponically that's low cost, uh, low input uh, as far as like energy and things like that. And uh, just to give you know a perspective on uh, some options to grow hydroponically. So uh, and uh, a presentation, hands free hydroponics. Uh, you know, um, I changed the title because I figured, you know, it'd be uh, people to say, oh, you know, um, there's a way I can grow some plants uh, pretty much hands free. And, you know, once you uh, kind of apply these methods, uh, you'll see it's pretty uh, low maintenance. So, um, so the subtitle is Practical Application of Publication of a Suspended Net Pot Non Circulating Hydroponic Method for Commercial Production. Of leafy romaine and semi head lettuce by B. A. Cracky, Department of Tropical Plant and Sciences. So that's the name of the publication that I pretty much uh, used for this presentation. I adapted a lot of the, or uh, you know, um, took a lot of things from that publication, put it into this presentation um, as well. So um, if you want to Google this, uh, the title, you can find the PDF explained in uh, even. So this method of hydroponics is called the crack key method, named after the author of the uh, of the publication. Um, let me see how to change my slide. Okay, so what is the crack key method? The crack key method is a non-circulating hydroponic system used to commercially grow leafy and semi-head lettuce. Uh, non-circulating means that it requires no electricity or pumps to circulate the water uh, throughout the system like like you would in an ebb and flow system or nft system or something like that there's also no air pumps to uh, aerate the water like you would in a deep water uh, um, hydroponic system excuse me the entire crop of lettuce or you know whatever plant you choose is grown in a single application of water and nutrients so uh, and i'll explain it further and it can be adapted to grow other leafy green crops Created by B.A. Cracky, a horticulturist from the University of Hawaii. Oh, keep doing that. Okay, so the system design is a deep water hydroponic system without the use of a pump. Uh, so tanks that you create, uh, you know, that you make, or you know, whatever you use for your tank is a. Uh, so in this case, we line tanks with polyethylene plastic. Uh, then you fill it to the top. So this will be your tank right here with nutrient solution. A foam board, oh man, what did I do? Okay, a foam board is placed over the tank. That would be this little blue piece right here uh, with holes drilled into it. And you put the plant in a net pot. The plant grows in the nutrient solution. As the plant grows over here, the water level drops. The space between the foam board and the surface of the water is, your, is where your oxygen is. And that's how the plants get the oxygen. And, um, and uh, yeah. And it grows. Uh, once the uh, nutrient solution is exhausted, that's pretty much when you harvest your plant. So the growth process: the seedlings are watered from the bottom by capillary action. As the water level declines, like I said, the uh, the, uh, the air space is created between the the surface of the water and the bottom of the plant. Uh, the roots between uh, the, the net pot and the, and the water surface are called your oxygen roots, and they will take up the air from the, uh, take up the oxygen from the human air that surrounds them. And the crop is uh, harvested when the nutrient solution is exhausted. The tank is clean, refilled with fresh nutrient solution, and the process repeated. Okay. So uh, just a materials list um, to, uh, to build the whole system uh, yourself. Um, and let's say, so you have uh, three two by six by eight foot uh, boards like you see over here. Then you will use uh, two and a half inch deck screws, two and a half, three inches. Uh, it doesn't really, it's not that uh, big of a deal. Then you use a four, eight, a four by eight sheet of plywood, which you see down here, usually about a half inch thick or, you know, yeah, um, like a half to three fourths is fine. You would need your six mil plastic uh, right here, 
uh, you would need your one half inch to one inch thick polystyrene uh, ring foam, which is right here at uh, that says Lowe's on it. And so it, this will actually be in the insulation section. This is actually insulation foam. Uh, then you need a two inch hole saw that you see here. Uh, you would need a drill to attach the hole saw right here, two inch net pots, and then you will use your potting or planting cubes, uh, potting soil or planting cubes. So these cubes right here are called oasis cubes, uh, where you stick the seed, uh, one seed in each square here, and then you uh, sub irrigate, which means you water these cubes from the bottom. Water gets uh, soaked up through capillary action, and uh, they, you know, they water the seed. You use something like this right here, which is a, a, a plant plug, like a almost like a rock wool. This is not rock wool, but they have rock wool and other type of plugs that you can also grow your plants in. Or you can use potting soil, which is uh, how I prefer to do it. And then of course you would need your seedlings or seeds, uh, depending on what step you're starting with. Okay, so your grow tanks. Hydroponic lettuce is grown in tanks filled with your nutrient solution, which will be water plus a complete hydroponic fertilizer. Uh, instead of so, uh, uh, instead of in soil, as with uh, common conventional field production. So your tanks are filled with one and a half to two gallons of nutrient solution per plant prior to planting. Thus, a tank to grow 50 heads of lettuce should have a liquid capacity in the range of 75 to 100 gallons. And the common tank dimensions we use are four by four, four by eight, and four by 16. Uh, yep. So what's the next one? So tank construction, this is the tank I built uh, in the greenhouse and you can see uh, some in the background. So you construct a rectangular frame with your two by six here. So you just, uh, so you take your plywood right here, your four by eight plywood, uh, stand up your two by six on the edge of the plywood, use your two and a half inch deck screws to, uh, to, to drill the screw in from the bottom through the plywood right there. And then uh, what I did, I just cut I mean, I'm kind of lazy how I do stuff. So I just put everything on and just cut it after I got to, so I have to measure, you know. So you would cut off a four foot section that would go across this one side and the other four foot section will go across this side. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. So this is a four by eight, let me see. So this was a different board actually. This was actually like a 12 foot board, but really uh, you just get a four by eight. So you get three, four, uh, two by eights, I'm sorry two by six by eight, so you get three of them. One would go here, I'm sorry, one would go there. You would cut it, and then the third one you would cut in half and use that for your four foot lengths. So hopefully I didn't make that too confusing. <laughs> um, and then you wanna construct your tanks at a height that's comfortable to you. Uh, so like waist height is really good because uh, it's not gonna be too high. You can't uh, reach over and uh, handle the plants and harvest and do things like that, but you don't want it to be too low to where it's you know a problem with your backup and things like that. Because, uh, and just remember, wherever you construct the tank and you fill it up with water, that's pretty much where it's gonna stay until you drain it, because it's gonna weigh about 800 pounds. So here's some more uh, images of the tank construction. So it's pretty much like building a garden bed that just has a bottom, you know? So if you build a raised bed before, you can build one of these tanks. This is all the tools I use. I use a, a circular saw, a drill, screws and was able to construct that part uh, fairly easily. So next, after your frame is constructed, you line it with two layers of six mil plastic. Uh, so the rows come in 10 foot by 100 or 10 foot by 200. Uh, so they'll be 10 feet wide and 200 or 100 feet long. Um, so yeah, so what we do, you know, so what I do, I roll one, uh, cut one layer, Put it on here, kind of press it down. I take a staple gun, which I forgot to include in the list. Uh, you don't have to use this, but I use a staple gun just to staple down the sides of the plastic. Once I get all the creases and stuff uh, and I, uh, everything flat, I use a staple gun to staple down the sides. And then I kind of trim off the excess, um, which I didn't do at first, but it looks neater. So once you get your second uh, layer of plastic, then you use your water, you know, then you want to fill the tank up use the weight of the water to help spread out the plastic and even things out, as you can see over here. Uh, and another thing to consider, uh, which I never really get right, but 
it's best to try to get the tanks as level as you can um, before you fill it up. Um, because what will happen is if it's like, you know, off a half an inch, like say it's leaning a half an inch this way, this side of the tank is going to be full of water. This side is going to be a little shallow, like down here. And what will happen is your plants that are on this side are not going to get water in the beginning and will probably end up dying because the water level is not reaching the bottom of the, of the pot. So being level is probably one of the most important things. It'll be a lot easier than having to go back and readjust and take water out and things like that. So getting it level right the first time will save you a lot of a headache. Um, tank cover construction. Uh, you, so you would need your styrofoam board next. Uh, you want at least a half inch thick because uh, real thin ones like a quarter inch or something like that is going to be too flimsy to support the weight of the plants because once these plants get uh, get growing, it's going to be kind of heavy. Uh, so, and the board will tend to bow in or if you try to lift it up to check or something and, you know, measure your pH in the water, you could probably uh, rip the foam because they get kind of fragile too. So, you want to try to get a thick foam if you can. Uh, and the whole size will depend on the size of the net pot you intend to use. So we tend to use two inch net pots. So that's why we say a two inch hole saw. But if you wanna grow some plants that maybe get a little bigger, you need a, a larger support, you can use a three inch pot, things like that. I mean, they make five inch pots. Just depends on what you wanna grow. Uh, so the plants will sit in these net pots and then they go inside the foam board. So you can see uh, we kind of drill them out right here. And um, what I do, I used to go like, uh, two to three inches from the edge and then four inches center to center between plants. Uh, no, six inches, I think, center to center between plants. So really on a four by eight, you can grow about 48 to 50 heads of lettuce. So if you can space it out to, you know, you can get like 12 rows of four or five rows of 10, something like that, uh, you'll be good to go. Um, it's just however accurate you wanna be, it's up to you. Um, so here you can see, these are the foam boards after we uh, drilled out the holes, set them on top, and then this side, you see them with the net pots in each of them. So, like I was saying, like uh, you can see in this image, if this side was to be leaning, if the tank was leaning this way, then this side would probably be too shallow, and you know, you might have problems with like plants on one side drying out, so that's just what I mean by getting it level. Uh, next, okay, so planting density. The grower must determine the optimal planting density, uh, number of plants per square foot per tank. Two common planting densities for lettuce are 1.5 and 1.9 plants per square foot, or 48 to 60 plants, respectively, per four by eight, per, uh, four by eight uh, tank. Densities greater than two plants per square foot for larger head cultivar of ours grown to mature head stage will often result will often result in crowning. So that means if you're growing head lettuce. Uh, if you put them too close than two plants per square foot, it's going to uh, result in crowding. You're not going to get the full head size that you need on your head lettuce. Because, uh, you know, when plants grow tightly together, they compete for space. They reach up for light. So that's going to grow more tall than wide. So that's why you want to grow in head varieties, big you know, varieties. You want to give the plants more space than if you were growing like leafy or something like that. Uh, so higher planting densities are usually done with smaller cultivars, such as Lola Rosa, or when plants are harvested at a younger stage. So yeah, if you're not letting them grow to full maturity, you can definitely get more plants in, uh, in into one space. Uh, growers are advised to compare several planting densities for their growing situation on a small scale before committing to a specific density for commercial scale production. And then parameters to consider include quality, weight, size, shape, diseases, and crowding. Just the next slide, okay. So fertilization. Most commercial lettuce and green growers use a general purpose mix, which is like a 5, 12, 36. I've seen an 8, 12, 26, uh, something along that lines. Uh, uh, and, and then you wanna combine that with magnesium sulfate and calcium nitrate, and that'll be a complete fertilizer formula for greens. Uh, other hydroponic formulas are also acceptable, but stock solutions must be prepared based on the manufacturer's instructions. So what we do with fertilization, uh, commercial growers tend to make a stock solution, which is they pre-mix all of their stuff first uh, in two separate tanks, and then they add the concentrated stock solution to their final solution that's in the water tank. Uh, 
And the, the reason why you want to do it in two different batches is because you can't mix calcium with phosphorus because um, it's going to precipitate into calcium phosphate. So that's why you want to mix your calcium nitrate in a different tank than your, uh, in your Kimbro that's going to have your phosphorus and magnesium sulfate. Some people even go as far as to do three tanks where they put their magnesium sulfate in a tank by itself as well. Uh, but I've gone as far as, uh, I mean, when I first did it, I didn't even use a separate tank. I just measured out my fertilizer that I needed for 100 gallons, which is what a four by eight by six inch high tank would, uh, would um, have. And I just put them in the tank, <laughs> like just straight in the tank where the, you know, the lettuce were already in, uh, which it worked out for me too. Um, so either way you want to do it, but uh, I, it's probably best to just go ahead and pre-mix them in their separate tanks and then add that to the final uh, concentration. So to make your stock solution, uh, and this is a recipe for, for lettuce and most your greens, for make your stock solution A, you will add one pound of your uh, general purpose mix, like your 5, 12, 36, and then you add 0.6 pounds of magnesium sulfate to one gallon of water. So let's say if you, uh, you know, if you um, are making 25 gallons, then you know, you, make, you add 25 pounds and then like, like I said, 15 pounds. Um, and then to make your stock solution B, you add one pound of calcium nitrate to one gallon of water. Uh, nutrients from the two stock solutions are added to the tank in equal parts. So one half, one half ounce, or let's say a half ounce of each fertilizer stock solution is added per gallon of water in the tank. So a, a 90 gallon tank will require you to add 45 ounces of stock solution A and 45 ounces of stock solution B for a total of 90 ounces. Uh, so that's kind of simple to remember, you know, however many gallons your tank is, that's how many gallons of stock solution of both you need, divide that by two, and that's how much you need for each solution. So one gallon of stock solution A plus one gallon of stock solution B uh, equals 256 ounces. So that means uh, if you were to uh, make this solution, there'd be enough fertilizer for two 90 gallon lettuce tanks with 16 ounces left. All right. Hope that makes sense to everybody. And if you have questions, we can go over it. Um, so measuring your pH. These are some of the uh, tools you can use to measure pH. So the, the acidity or alkalinity of the nutrient solution is measured in pH. When pH is below four or above seven, nutrient availability is uh, affected. Availability of manganese, copper, zinc, iron, and, uh, and iron are decreased with the high pH. The availabilities of phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium are decreased with a low pH. So your macronutrients are decreased when the pH is low. Your micronutrients are decreased when the pH is high. Uh, the recommended pH range for, uh, for hydroponics is between 5.5 and 6.5. Uh, pH meter is the most common way of measuring your pH. Uh, they all need periodic calibration as uh, in inaccurate readings can result in uh, fertilizer mistakes. Uh, inexpensive pH uh, test kits with a range of four to eight and a half are also available and may be used alone or in addition to a pH meter. Uh, and are good enough for most growers and hobbyists. Uh, and the growers may also use pH paper strips. So like here's a meter right here. Um, and some people use these paper strips. This is the one I have, a, little, a Hannah Grow uh, a meter. And um, yeah, it lasts a long time. Excuse me. Uh, measuring your EC. Your EC is the electro uh, conductivity or the salinity of your solution. And it measures the electrical conductivity of all the ions in your solution. It is, so it, is, it does not distinguish between nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus. It's just going to measure the total amount of ions in your solution. Uh, there can be a low level of an individual ion, even though there's a high EC reading. So, uh, it, but an EC meter is a very useful instrument when, grower, when a grower applies a widely used commercial hydroponic fertilizer formulation. So, but when measuring uh, EC, here's some things to remember. Inaccurate readings may occur with poorly mixed solutions. Higher readings are often found at the bottom of the tank because a lot of the salts that don't dissolve accumulate at the bottom. So you might get lower, uh, higher readings on your EC when, when, the, uh, when the meter is further down in your tank. EC meters give higher readings when the nutrient solution temperature increases. And EC readings of the nutrient solution tend to rise during hot weather. And during the cool weather, they tend to decrease. So the recommended electrical conductivity range 
is from 1 to 1.5 millisiemens. That's how they measure it during hot weather. And 1.6 to 2.5 in cool weather. But you want to use your experience. So, and if you see this meter right here actually measures pH and EC and the temperature of your solution. So that's why I use this because most of the meters, you can measure all three things in one. Uh, but you get, so just remember your EC is how salty the water is. And if the water has too much salt in it, it's gonna affect the way the plant grows because it's not gonna be able to take up enough water because the salinity is gonna be drawing water out of the plant. So you wanna keep your EC in a range that's uh, beneficial for plants. Uh, so selecting plants, most uh, growers choose to start their plants from seeds. Uh, however, if time is a factor, transplants can be used. Uh, seeds are grown in cell trays instead of sown directly into the grow tank. This way, the most uniform plants are selected and germination percentage is maximized. Uh, and if you get a, a 50 cell tray, it's like a, those little plastic trays like this, but there'll be 50 cells. This is, I think, 124 still. A 50 cell tray is exactly like the right size for a two inch net pot. So if you get a 50 cell tray, all your plugs will be two inches. They'll go right into the pot. Um, so growers can choose to start seeding a soil based media, which is what I use, or they can use a non soil growing medium like rock wool or oasis cube. So this is what oasis cubes are. It's non soil based. Um, so yeah, and, and then when your seedlings are ready, you just take them out of their cells or break the thing up and you put them directly into your tank. And that way you can select a uniform, uh, you can select uniform plants that are, are gonna grow at the same height and everything like that. So as you can see right here, uh, these are some uh, seeds that we germinated and then we selected. And um, actually I think I bought these transplants from a nursery, but uh, I selected the best ones, we put them in there. And uh, this is about like a month later, you can see, uh, there's like a little head of lettuce down there. Um, so harvesting, uh, early morning is the best time for harvesting. Hands must be washed well, uh, especially after the toilet visit. Lettuce is eaten raw, so you definitely have to be extra safe with lettuce. And hydroponics is good because you're not using any manure-based fertilizer, which you know is one of the things that's been contaminating lettuce uh, you know, that you get from other states. Um, and then these are just some of the things. Uh, after harvesting, net pots should be clean. And it may be easier just to allow the plant roots to sit in the pots to dry out for a couple of weeks and then it's you can just easy to pull them out. Some some plants, if you're growing like really big plants, like collard greens to get you know longer roots, you might not even be able to pull the roots out. You might have to throw the pot away. Sometimes you can't even, they get so twisted in there, it breaks the net pot. Uh, the tank cover should be clean and any leaf debris removed. I spelled leaf wrong, forgive me. Uh, normally, the tank does not need to be rinsed with water. New nutrient solution is added and growing cycles repeated. Lettuce, leaf lettuce varieties can be cut at the base and will grow back, actually. So this lettuce right here, actually, it got way bigger than this. I wish I took a picture. I cut it at the, at the base and just let it grow back, and a whole nother <laughs> head grew back. So, And this is some examples, some lettuce we grew uh, from this system right there. And then this is one I grew actually outdoors, uh, some butter crunch lettuce. In, in this system. Some adaptations, which is what I learned. Uh, many growers use uh, high, uh, cracky hydroponics outdoors, potentially exposing the system in the rain. So you would want to create a, some kind of rain shelter to cover your, your tank because what will happen is the rain will go through the net pots, it'll fill your tank up and it'll kill your oxygen roots that are in there. Um, and it's just gonna just make everything look horrible. So end up killing your plants. So yeah, you wanna uh, uh, get some way to stop rain from coming in your system if you do use it outside. Uh, some other adaptations you can use, instead of using a four by eight tank, this right here, you can take a five gallon bucket, which I've shown people before, cut a hole with your same drill, put a net pot, and you can grow one plant per bucket. Uh, you can also take this, these, these are like the little tote boxes, there's some smaller than that one. I've done it in these two, and you could, it's the same method, drill the holes in the lid, pour your water and your fertilizer in the, in the tank, you just adjust it for the amount of gallons you have, this is like a 26 gallon tank, maybe, and you can grow plants just like that. So you don't have to have a four by eight, you don't have to have any woodworking saws and all that, you can just get a tote, just need a hole saw and a drill, or you can just use a knife, uh, if you need to just cut a hole, you know, whatever, but, uh, it's it's as expensive or, or as cheap as you want it to be in a lot of cases. Um, and then these are just some of the pictures I've grown in the system. So this is kale. 
this was planted uh, actually in like October, and this is New Year's Day right here. So we have some cabbage uh, and kale in there, and then these are some coll uh, collard greens I grew in the system. You can see there's no there's no leaf or no bug bites, no fertilizer deficiencies, anything like that. This is some cabbage. Uh, I I didn't have time to let it grow as big as it needed to be, but I just I just took them out, you know, uh, harvested those, and we actually ate the, the leaves and everything, just like collard greens. Uh, here's some lettuce uh, I grew. Uh, now, this was put in the system in mid-summer, like July, and like these plants looked horrible. I didn't think they were going to survive, uh, and this is probably like November, and so everything came out nicely. This is collard greens I grew in the same system. Uh, I did six beds of these, and I was able, off of one bed, I harvested, I want to say 20 pounds of collard greens, uh, well, about every six weeks. And, I had, and, then, and this is what the collard greens look like. So they were nice, uh, small size. The stems weren't very big or, or very tough. So you could just chop everything up, eat it all together. Um, this was actually sold to a restaurant, I think, like the same day I harvested. So what's good about this, this uh, you know, you can do harvest to order, things like that too, and just let them keep growing as you wait. And um, yeah, so we would harvest these collard greens pretty much almost all the way down and then just let them grow back in like six weeks and uh yeah we, we got plenty of, of food from that and oh and that's it